Hello and welcome everyone. So now we are going to see the design of beams in a steel structures. And you must have seen the design of singly reinforced beam, doubly reinforced beam and L and T shaped beams in RCC. So here the design of steel beams will be done with the help of IS 800. And I recommend you that you keep IS 800 book as well as steel table handbook also with you so that you can write the properties of sections that we are going to use in design of beams and you can note down all those properties and can understand the formulas which we are going to apply here. So as far as introduction is concerned, a beam is a horizontal member and uh, they are seen commonly in the structure spanning between columns and they support the loads which is coming uh, on the structure by uh, two axons and these two axons are the bending and the shear that's why you have seen in rcc beams also we provide two kinds of reinforcement for adjusting the load one is the longitudinal reinforcement and other is the transverse reinforcement so longitudinal reinforcement resist by bending action and transverse reinforcement resist by shear action so the similar actions also occurs here also and they normally supports the floors roof seatings and just like in the case of purlins and side claddings etc so there are different types of beams also and these all are the different types of beams which are commonly seen in the structures so the very first type of beam is the floor beams and they are called the primary beams or the major beams which supports the secondary beams or the joists and then we see if we discuss uh, this design of beams in detail then we go for the design of gantry girders plate girders so all these are the complex built up beam sections and they are generally the floor beams in case of buildings especially in the industrial buildings and then we also hear of lintel beam and lintel beam are the beam which carry the wall load over the openings that we provide in a structure like windows ventilation uh, and uh, the doors so above that we provide a lintel beam and then comes the purlin Purlins are the beams which connect two consecutive roof trusses. Okay. So, this case study of purlin, we will also see how it is designed in the coming videos. And above purlin, we provide another uh, series of beams, they are called rafter and they are supported by purlins. And then there is a spandrel beam or the cantilevered beam which we provide normally in the chajas. So these beams are the outermost wall of buildings and they carry the floor load and exterior walls. Then there is the stringer beam and the stringer beams are commonly uh, there in the bridge decks and they are the longitudinal beams and they are being supported by the floor beams so stringer beams are the secondary beams which are supported by the primary floor beams and let us have a look on different types of beams here in these pictures and you can see these horizontal elements are the beams being shown here and this is one picture of a bridge deck being constructed and these are the major beams or the floor beams or primary beams then this is a roof truss and here on the roof truss these are the trusses these angular trusses okay and these um, consecutive trusses are connected by a longitudinal beam which is called purlin and then there are rafters okay so rafters are parallel to the uh, trusses but purlins are uh, let down perpendicular to these trusses and in the common RCC structure also you have seen that there are beams like this and these are the joist and then there is columns and this is the spandrel beam which is generally uh, at the outermost side 
and these are the wall footings and spread footing stringer beam stringer beams are basically the secondary beams which are being supported by the primary beam so this is a stringer beams okay and this is being shown here under stairs okay but stringer beams are also uh, available in the um, bridges also so you can see here stringer beams clearly so these small small beams are the stringer beams and they are being carried by the primary beams which is known as floor beams and these floor beams are further carried over these trusses so you can see different pictures of bridge decks here and different floor beams being applied here so beam uh, are classified also on the basis of type of support that we have provided so we have discussed this and studied these in our simple mechanic course also and there we have studied simply supported beam cantilever beams fixed beams and continuous beams so we know the difference between uh, the type of supports that we have provided in all these four types of beam so simply supported beams looks like this and here is a roller and cantilever beam is like this one side is completely free okay and fixed beam is fixed on both side okay whereas continuous beam runs continuously over multiple supports okay so like this you have learned all the different types of beams based on type of supports that we have provided but basically if we see there are uh, different uh, types of beam also uh, in the steel structure and they can be universal beams which are the different rolled sections and uh, in this we consider that all the material is concentrated in the flanges and very efficient in uniaxial bendings and then there is compound beam in which we add some more plates to the flanges and uh, they can resist the bending in vertical as well as horizontal direction then there is composite beam and in this in this case we make a composite of rolled section with the roof slab so that it also gives the lateral support now we will discuss the lateral support here also and the concrete floor provides the necessary lateral support to compression flange to prevent lateral buckling actually lateral support is uh, required in uh, any beams basically to the uh, flanges at the top as i said beams are the um, flexural member which have compressive forces at the top and tensile forces at the bottom so the flanges at the bottom uh, can easily resist the tensile load but the top flanges which are subjected to compressive forces they may uh, buckle laterally okay if we have not provided sufficient lateral support to the top compression flanges so there may be chances of local bucklings okay of flanges and flanges can take the shape like ripples okay so these lateral supports are very very important and then there can be castellated beams in which we provide corrugations okay and basically we provide the corrugation in the web portion and we cut the web of a wide flange beam in a corrugated pattern okay and the cut parts are separated and they are shifted and welded as shown in this picture you if you can see this is how they cut first of all the beams web portion and then they are ridged and then they are welded like this and finally this is the castellated beam and this is how it is being done in the industries and you can look how beautiful they look like aesthetically also and they are enhanced in strength also because castellation has a lot of advantages they are light strong and cheap easy to assemble because openings are already provided so you can pass through all the electricians and plumbing ducts can be easily pass through these holes and they improve the aesthetics also and 
depth can be determined at will by changing the cutting patterns so this is also used beside other types of beam so let us discuss the classification of beam sections and this is also being discussed first of all in the is code also and if you see the page number 17 of your is code and this is is 800 uh, 2007 and here in clause 3.7 it is given the classification of cross section so basically we design the beams by plastic analysis and in plastic analysis we look for the uh, plastic hinge formation at different uh, joints in the beams so what happens basically we use the plastic when we use the plastic analysis member shall be capable of forming plastic hinges with sufficient rotation capacity ductility without local buckling to enable the redistribution of bending moment required before formation of the failure mechanism so here uh, we are trying to achieve the plastic hinge formation and it happens at this value of moment mp and mp is the plastic moment capacity of a section okay and when elastic analysis is used the members shall be capable of developing the yield stress under compression without local buckling but generally there are good number of chances that local buckling occurs so this case will not be much used mostly we will go for plastic analysis only and on the basis of ever there are four classes of sections uh, in which the beams are classified so you can see the very first section class 1 is called plastic section then there is class 2 section which are called compact section then there is class 3 section which are called semi compact section and then there is class 4 which is called cylinder section so you can see all these type of sections are also given in this table number 2 and this table basically classify different section based on its width by thickness ratio and according to that value this ratio value we classify a section as class 1 plastic section class 2 compact section class 3 semi compact section and otherwise it will come into the category of class 4 which is slender section so class 1 section is that cross section which can develop plastic hinges and have the rotation capacity required for failure of the structure by formation of plastic mechanism so if you have studied plastic analysis in the structural analysis and there you must have studied this plastic hinges formation so there uh, sufficient plastic hinges form then there is a mechanism and by that the structure can collapse without any chances of local buckling so here if the width to thickness ratio of plate elements shall be less than that specified under class 1 uh, column in the table number 2 then it will come into class 1 and cross section which can develop plastic moment of resistance but they may not be able to develop the plastic moment capacity or this required number of plastic hinges uh, due to certain local buckling so in class 2 local buckling starts so the width to thickness ratio is also given uh, in the uh, table number 2 again whereas in class 3 semi compact type of section are those cross sections in which the extreme fiber in compression can reach only yield stress okay they will not attain to the plastic moment they will only reach the yield moment so yield moment is lesser than the plastic moment see try to understand from the stress strain diagram of steel when steel reaches the yield moment or the yielding point is achieved then we say that material has yielded and we consider that it has yielded and we consider its uh, yielding failure but still uh, it has a large uh, ductility which we have ignored 
okay even after achieving to this yielding there is a reserve capacity of the section that it can undergo a lot of deformation without getting uh, failed okay so in that case we go for the plastic analysis beyond the elastic analysis and that is the entire uh, curve of the plateau beneath the um, yielding uh, portion okay so that's why in class 3 are those semi compact section which just reaches yielding moment only and they can't develop plastic moment of resistance okay plastic moment of resistance develops when entirely all the fibers extreme at the mid and at the bottom all the fibers reaches yielding moment or the uh, yield stress okay but in class 3 only the extreme fiber is reaching to the yield stress due to local bucklings so in this case also width to thickness ratio are specified in the column number 3 and class 4 which is uh, also called as slender section and these cross sections in which the elements buckle locally even before uh, reaching yield stress at the extreme fiber so in class 4 type of sections which are slender sections even the extreme fiber do not reaches the yield stress and they easily buckle so that's why they are called slender type of column and the width to thickness ratio if it is greater than what is specified under column 3 so that will undergo um, class 4 section and you can note that the design shall be calculated either by following the provision of IS801. So this is another um, dimension where post local buckling strength is that's out of scope of our syllabus even. So class 4 section design we will not be undergoing. Okay. So, and you can see this table and here you can see these are the different compression elements and basically in our case the compression element is the top flange which you can see here compression flange for the rolled section for the welded section and mostly you will encounter with this rolled section only and then there can be web of an i or h or box section for the see there can be open sections and there can be closed section so closed sections looks like a box section so in that case we have to apply these uh, ratios and uh, then for a channel we have to go along with this row and for angle we have to use these values angle compression due to bending so now if you see here b take the ratio of width by thickness now what, what is this b and tf tf is the thickness of flange which you can write from the steel table what is this b b value you can look at the next page and b is this half of the flange width so b is equal to bf by 2 all right and then you can see somewhere we have used this small d also so what is this a small d a small d is also shown in the next uh, page and this is a small d See, D is not here height. D is only the depth of web portion. Okay. And depth of web portion is calculated by subtracting from the height 2 times the thickness of flanges minus 2 times the radius at the uh, corners here. Okay. So, here D is equal to if height of the section is a small h then small d will be equal to a small h minus 2 times the thickness of flange minus 2 times radius at the corner and this value of radius at the corner you can get from the steel table again mostly in all the sections it is provided there so that's why steel tables become very very important and this value has to be compared and calculated and then compared with these values now what is this epsilon 
so epsilon is given here in the notes and you can see epsilon is equal to root under 250 by fy now epsilon is most of the time it is equal to 1 if we have used fe415 steel because in fe415 steel fy value is equal to 250 so epsilon comes out to be 1 so that's why we most of the time ignore this epsilon and here it is written that bebs shall be checked the bebs see in the i section there is one beb and there is two flanges and flanges takes the bearing loads and the beb portion takes the shear loads so bebs shall be checked for shear buckling now as we have seen that flanges can fail under compression um, especially the top flange when these ratios are not satisfied why we are applying these checks just to check that flanges do not buckle locally similarly bebs can also buckle locally under shear forces and they, those buckling are called as shear buckling of the bebs and it is specifically in the case when depth of the bib by thickness is greater than 67 epsilon and here b is the width of element and t is the thickness of element and d is the depth of bib you can see this and how do we calculate the depth of bib we have discussed here also so this classification of section is very very important and you can see that the bending strength of a beam depends upon how well the section performs in bending okay and thin projection flange of an i beam so there is flanges here in the i beams okay and these flanges especially the thin portion so this is the thin portion of the flanges which is being projected from the i beams is likely to buckle prematurely prematurely means before uh, even achieving full load and this is beb so beb of an i section also can buckle under compressive stress due to bending and shear so in order to prevent all these local bucklings it is necessary to limit outstanding thickness ratio of flanges and depth by thickness ratio of bib so that's why we are applying two ratios here b upon tf for the flanges okay and we are also checking for d upon t for bibs okay so that's why we are checking both for the flanges and for the bibs also because any of the two can buckle locally and then the sectional dimension should be such that following conditions are satisfied and when the design is made using elastic analysis we know that member uh, shall be able to reach this value of yield stress under compression without buckling and most of the time this is not the case because there are good chances of local buckling so we go for plastic analysis in which members shall be able to form sufficient number of plastic uh, hinges before reaching the collapse mechanism so if you ask me to discuss plastic analysis it's the transition from elastic to plastic analysis and in elastic design the member capacity is only limited to yield stress but steel has a unique property of ductility and that is not utilized in elastic method and ductility enables the material to absorb large deformation even beyond the elastic limit without getting fractured and that's why we say that steel poses reserve strength even beyond the yield strength so that method utilizes the reserve method is called the plastic analysis and the concept of very concept of plastic analysis is shown in these diagrams and uh, this is my cross section of an i beam and here it is being loaded and we can draw the strain diagrams of this cross section so in the first figure here the moment is less than yielding moment 
सो इन दैट केस द एक्सट्रीम फाइबर्स हैव नॉट इवन रीच द ईल्ड स्ट्रेस वेन मोमेंट रीच इज द ईल्डिंग मोमेंट देन द स्ट्रेस इन द एक्सट्रीम फाइबर इज इक्वल टू ईल्ड स्ट्रेस ट्राई टू सी दिस फिगर वेरी केयरफुली एंड वेन मोमेंट नाउ मोमेंट हैव एक्सीडेड द वैल्यू ऑफ ईल्ड मोमेंट बट इट इज लेस देन प्लास्टिक मोमेंट so there is two types of moment one is the yield moment and other is the plastic moment so plastic moment is larger than this yield moment why it is larger you will understand now we are going to increase load and by increasing the load now moment has exceeded the yield moment but it is still less than plastic moment so what is happening due to increase in load now the internal fibers are also starting to yield and all these internal fibers have now reached the yield stress so a portion of fiber have now reached the yield stress fy so we can say this portion is in the plastic portion and this portion is also in the plastic portion whereas the remaining portion is the elastic portion now if we go on increasing the load on the i beam here then what will happen at one point the moment will reach the plastic moment capacity and at that value of moment what will happen the entire fiber entire fiber you see on the top and the bottom will reach the yield strength of the steel so here f will be equal to fy for the entire fibers and that is the zone when we can say that entire beam ha has reached the plastic zone and here is the plastic hinge formation occurs so at such a section plastic hinge is formed and uh, uh, that forms and when the sufficient number of plastic hinges are formed then the beams can collapse in a mechanism uh, and here um the chances of local bucklings are avoided if we have applied those checks for uh, thicknesses ratios so this is the basic concept of plastic analysis here we are increasing the bending moment slowly and slowly initially bending moment less than yield moment now moment is equal to yield moment and then it is in between m by and mp and now it has reached plastic moment okay so this is the basic concept and we have discussed all these and here the yield moment can also be written as my is can be written as this is ze into fy now ze is the elastic section modulus so z is called as section modulus so ze is called elastic section modulus okay this you can understand and uh, mp is equal to zp into fy so mp is the plastic moment and m by is the elastic moment now the ratio of mp and m by is equal to zp upon z by okay so this ratio is called shape factor and this is also very very important in plastic analysis so ze is the elastic section modulus you can see this so here these all these things are explained and mp value is equal to fy times zp it is proven here and then uh, here the maximum moment mp is called plastic moment of resistance and the portion of the member where mp occurs if this is the portion then we can say that here is the formation of a plastic hinge so this portion now this portion acts as a plastic hinge in our beams so for equilibrium of normal forces now on the if you see the graphs of the plastic moment section and we do the equilibrium of these two sections so top section is the compressive force and the bottom section is the tensile force and if we equate c equal to t then uh, what happens that uh, 
in fully plastic stays because the stress is uniformly equal to yield stress equilibrium is achieved and when the neutral axis divides the section into two equal areas and this is possible only when the neutral axis is dividing the section into two equal halves and all these are the basic concepts of plastic analysis which is not the part of steel right now so all this i hope you must have studied and this is the uh, cross section of our beam here and for the plastic analysis we divide this uh, cross section into two equal halves and that becomes the neutral axis and this is how we do the calculation a1 is equal to a2 is equal to total area by 2 and then we calculate the plastic moment like this mp is equal to fy into area 1 into y1 plus fy into area 2 into y2 okay so this is how mp is basically calculated and it is equated by fy into jp so jp comes out to be a by 2 plus y1 by y2 and then we can move to the topic of safe factor and safe factor as i said that it is the ratio of plastic moment and elastic moment and it is a property of cross sectional shape so shape factor does not depends on the material properties okay so as the name suggests it only depends on the shape okay cross sectional shape not on the material properties so mp by m by e is equal to jp by ze and safe factor is always greater than 1 because as i have always said that mp is always greater than my okay so mp upon my will always be greater than 1 okay so safe factor is always greater than 1 okay so now if you discuss of the plastic hinge concept you can see all these things and how the plastic hinge formation occurs that we have understood already and here is how the beam sections are being classified and we have discussed the class 1 section is called the plastic section in which cross section fully develops plastic hinges and plastic moment are formed and it have sufficient rotation capacity for the failure of the structure without any local buckling and this is completely under plastic mechanism and class 2 is the compact section where cross section can develop plastic moment of resistance mp but it can't uh, form sufficient number of plastic hinges so um, because of some local bucklings so here also uh, comes the class 3 which is semi compact section and in this case the extreme fiber can reach yield stress but can't develop plastic moment of resistance so here it can reach my easily but not the value of plastic moment okay so this cannot be reached in this case it can be reached and class 4 section is the slender section which in which even the extreme fiber do not reach the yield stress and they buckle locally even before reaching yield stress so what to talk of plastic moment okay so these are the four types of sections classification of a beam and you can see this is the moment curvature diagram so this is uh, m here and this is curvature phi so you can see this is my yielding moment and this is my plastic moment plastic moment is greater than yield moment so if i draw a curve a moment curvature curve so if this curve almost goes up to this mp and then a sufficient rotation has developed then it fails okay so such a section will come under plastic section and this is plastic section this one because sufficient rotational capacity has developed in this zone here so this is plastic uh, section but there can be one section in which just it touches the plastic moment and then it fails due to local buckling so that section will be compact section and the third type of section can be semi-compact section which can just touches the yield strength 
and then it fails so in that case it will be called as semi compact section and slender type of section will fail even before reaching the yield stress and uh, basically we will see the design strength in bending in the coming video also so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you